what we have from our, our people online inshaAllah. And be sure to make uh, comments in the you, YouTubes and in the videos that go out so that we can read the comments and, and get an understanding, put a little summary of what you understood from uh, the last few nights, last week's uh, talks and, and tonight's talks inshaAllah so we can review them and go over like the class notes to see if people are, are, are picking it up or should we keep repeating or, or what is the understanding inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there a reality or connection between the purified light of Taseen and the purified reality of Batul of Sayyidatina Fatima Zahra alayhi salam? Everything has a connection but let's stick on the subject that we're talking about inshaAllah. Every light is connected, every light is, is it has a source. But from the realities that being described now, try to figure and try to understand deeper its understandings and its applications into our daily life before we try to go in every direction imaginable, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Thank you for all the teachings. Uh, Alhamdulillah, shukr indeed, your teachings are treasures and precious for me and my family. Uh, so Allah bless you. Forgive me for my bad adab. Um, can you please advise on the adab of visiting our shaykh in person? What is recommended in shaykh's presence? Good, good manners, everything that's been taught the way we're teaching. So, whatever we've been teaching, meditating, contemplating, talking with low voice, uh, keeping uh, your heart uh, filled with salawats, all, all of these are important in the, the mannerisms of muraqabah. When you meditate it's the same presence, it doesn't make a difference. The physical presence is even more hidden. The enter the house from the correct door is in reference in this reality to the soul. Means it's more important to meditate and make your connection to the, to the soul of the shaykh than to come into his physical presence. Because physical presence will… As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Confuse people because it won't show itself as anything. And people can lose their guard and begin to behave incorrectly. So the spiritual presence is what the, is the importance of the connection. When they make their connection with the spiritual connection then they're entering into the realities of the shaykh and the, the realities of light and the realities of entering into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad As a result of having a very strong spiritual connection then they'll have better adab in the physical realm. But if they don't have a spiritual connection then the likelihood is that in the physical they're going to make many mistakes, they're going to you know, the, the, everything becomes inappropriate because they don't really know who they're dealing with and they haven't made the connection into that reality. So it's like visiting Medina to Munawwara if you've never understood or read anything about Prophet other than, oh he's the Prophet of Islam. And you go one time and your first time you go to Medina, you go sightseeing, go to the bazaar, go everywhere and you stay one, two days and then you go somewhere else for longer. 
And maybe ten years later you realize that you studied and understood the immense importance of Prophet and whatever you were looking for was in Medina and whatever you were looking for was at Rosa Sharif in the presence of the one whom owns everything. And that Allah can only be found in Medina to Munawwara at the heart of Prophet If you understood that well I'm sure your umrah is going to be extremely different, extremely different. If you're searching for Allah where are you going to find Him? In Mecca with stones or you're going to find Him in the creation one that He created and that He created with His own two hands and that He blew into Him of His Spirit. Qalb al-Mu'min Baytullah, Allah's Mu'min is resting in Medina to Munawwara and Allah's Divinely Presence is there present and that's why we find tranquility and immense qudra in Medina to Munawwara because Allah is there. So everything is based on adab, based on knowledges, based on connections. So until we connect and understand, make that connection it gives us a yaqeen and certainty on our behaviour and mannerisms and exactly what that represents. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. If in meditation we get inspired to recite some zikr or dua or ayah, should we also recite those when we are not in meditation? Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't make it hard on yourself unless you're, you're is a very strong importance to recite something because then you, you just sort of make more and more and more recitations until it becomes so hard to start you don't want to start anymore because you have hours and hours of awrads to do. So it's enough to do what has already been written and be consistent with what the shaykhs have given of the daily awrad and the wazifa. And then if you're inspired within the meditation to pray a little bit more, recite a little bit more then alhamdulillah just for that day and that night inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah uh, Sayyidi there seems to be a great agenda to break the family unit and teach crazy things at school. Would you be able to address how do we teach our impressionable young how to deal with the pressures of school and social media in regards to this? I think we've done many talks unless you're tuning in new. So all last few months has all been about their agenda, the energy, the the reorienting people, how to raise children. So yeah, go through the library of videos and uh, there's many, many videos on these subjects of energy, orientation, the agenda of the elites. So no doubt there's a war on the family but they have patience and foresight. So they start their programs with 60 to 100 years and we can only think of 10 minutes our program and what we're going to do for the next 30 minutes. And it baffles the mind of these people that you think they really plan this. Well for someone who thinks in 10 minutes, no it doesn't make sense to you. But when shaitan has been here for how many thousands of years then you can imagine the level of patience he has in unfolding his agenda. And the jinn world their time is not like our time. Their lifespans three, four, five thousand years. Well, what does a hundred years have anything to do for them? It's like a blink of an eye. But for humans, because the time is not understood by them, they become impatient. And as a result, they can't imagine that there's programs and agendas unfolding. We said that uh, when marriage was at 99%, the TV was still in black and white. What happened when the TV went to colour? It was directed towards Eve and that she would exhibit makeup and colours and, and all sorts of self-beautification and promotion of herself. And as a result of seeing the world in colour on TV, everybody felt a, a need that they were missing something. 
and that they had to go and achieve this and achieve the world and then begin to dress inappropriately, look inappropriately and then they begin to mingle and leave the home, work outside the home and now they're in a situation of 99% divorce rate and 1% sticking. And as a result of that agenda was to take the mother out of the home so that she would enter into the workforce. As a result of working into the workforce or even before that we described, they were teaching children and, and new parents that, let your kids to scream and yell and put them in another room, infant. Why? Because that breaks the bond between the child and the parents and that the child loses the reliance upon the parent to come to its rescue. Where the sunnah is the child has to always be with the mother and that bond is an essential bond but shaitan wants to break that bond. Why? Because then the mother will be pushed to go to work and that child will be pushed into the school system and the school will become the mother and the school will teach what the, the social value, the cultural value, everything will be taught within their school system. So yes, this was an agenda that was 60-70 years in its making. So we didn't get to the dresses out of nowhere, they've been planning this all along. So that's why Islam is a light and that's why shaitan doesn't like Islam because it doesn't compromise and because Allah is guiding and protecting the religion and those whom ad adhere to the religion, they have a protection. And as a result they're the only ones saying, mm, this not going to happen, we're not going to follow that, we're not going to understand that, we're not going to do anything to do with that. And this is their difficulty with Islam. But Allah is great, in their plan Allah's plan is, is more supreme, Allah wrote the plans inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If someone sees lights of different colors and size around them or in the room or even in the bathroom with bare eyes for approximately two years now, what should they do or simply what does it mean? Please forgive me and my ignorance. <coughs> you should do nothing because seeing lights with your eyes doesn't mean anything, you, you could have optical problems. There can be nerve problems, there can be all sorts of different issues, this is not uh, about seeing so the whole understanding was incorrect. This is about connecting your heart, calming the bad character and connecting to the presence of the shaykhs. It's not about seeing through the eyes because the eyes are in illusion. So nothing coming from your physical eyes is a reality. This witnessing is through the heart. So when they meditate and make their tafakkur their head is bent, <coughs> they're not trying to see through their eyes. They're seeing through the reflection in their heart with the mirror of faith in front of them. So try not to focus on your eyes and it can be difficulties in optic nerves, in the mind, anything and you could be seeing flashes and light sparkings and things happening but that's not the objective of the tafakkur or the connection. The objective is to connect the heart and don't let that to be a distraction in which you think you've achieved something because you saw a green light, a purple light, a blue light but cats and different creatures see these different things. The hard part is to calm the bad character and connect with the shaykh and to really discipline oneself, really take an accounting of oneself. And that's what that seems to be missed 90% of the time. Lots of emails come and say, Shaykh everything very difficult, please pray for me. And I think the response from everybody emailing and emailing back is, what do you define as difficult? Entire villages, 20,000 people have been washed away. Earthquakes in which they slept and crushed overnight, body parts flown everywhere. That's difficult. Western society is a very pampered, spoiled group of people. 
in which they have no difficulty in food, they have no difficulty in housing, they have no difficulty really in sustenance because the government will give you money for your food and your housing, not to that degree that around the world is suffering with lack of access to water, food, nutrition, uh, basic life requirements. So we have to be ashamed when we say things are difficult because Allah can make it difficult if you'd like to experience true difficulty and that's why our zikr is, alhamdulillah, you know, alhamdulillah you're not in difficulty, shukranillah you're truly not in difficulty. And those whom are in difficulty, may Allah save them and relieve them. But the 99% within these Western worlds and all they use is this word, we're in difficulty, I'm in difficulty, you're not in difficulty, you really have no idea what difficulty is. What you are is being inconvenienced and not happy that things don't come your way because you thought that Allah was about submitting to you and that you would enter the religion and anything you wanted would happen and anything you, you wish to achieve would happen. And the tariqahs come to teach, uh, no we were supposed to pray to Allah and we were supposed to struggle in Allah's way, struggle. If you want something, work for it, fight for it, you know, you go through all the struggle to try to achieve it. And uh, you admire and respect it, so it means everything is a part. When, when you're trying to make a connection with Prophet you don't do that in the gym with everything inappropriate in your vision, inappropriate in your clothing, it means that everything has a adab and tarbiyah that you wash. Anytime you're meditating you're actually asking that you're going to Medina to Munawwara because the shaykh's soul is always in the presence of Prophet and that's his power source. So every time you meditate you have wudu, every time you meditate you fragrance yourself, you're in the best of your clothing for salah Allah tells the believers that wear the best of what you have for your salah, put all your ornaments because these are like medallions. All your zikr and all your good deeds, they're like medallions upon the heart. And then they would sit for their muraqabah, for their learning, to watch the videos, to take the notes. And they're asking to be in Hadrat al Nabi in the hudur of their shaykhs. Because the majlis of writing and listening made no difference between, oh am I really there with the shaykh or am I on YouTube listening to the shaykh? You're the one making the difference. So it's actually your mind causing the problem because the shaykh never said there's a difference. So it's the tarbiyah of the student, they wash, they clean, they put their environment, they put their book and then they begin their video. As soon as they do they're making their muraqabah and then they begin to make their notes and they, they're asking that I want to be in that hadara, in that presence of Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. If the shaykh is speaking, Prophet must be present with him, conveying into his heart. And Prophet doesn't come alone, he, just, he doesn't just appear alone, he's with his holy companions, he's with his Ahlul Bayt, he's with all those whom love him, what we call Salihin. Salaamu Alaykum Ayyuhan Nabi wa Ibadullahi Salihin. Is the entourage of light that accompanies Prophet So we're asking to be in that presence. That goes back to the adab on the question of the first one. If you were coming to visit the shaykh you come with that level of adab and respect. So this is, this is the, the strength of belief. The shaykh can't make a person believe, they have to believe. Based on your belief Allah makes it to be real. If you don't believe anything definitely it won't be real to anything. And many people can come, go and say, I didn't feel anything and they will never feel anything. And somebody can sit for a minute and say, I felt everything because that was their level of belief. That's why we said this whole path is based on belief.
not based on something the shaykh is going to do for somebody. If you believe it to happen and you conduct yourself accordingly then Allah is great and makes the belief to be real because everything is in the hands of Allah But if we don't believe it then it doesn't happen. So many people say, if I'm going to just jump off the roof will Allah save me? Say, absolutely not. You jump off, you hit then onto the concrete and no problem. It's not about proving that we, are, that we have to prove that Allah's there, it's about believing Allah's there that I could never do anything to harm myself, this is against Islamic laws. So it's, it's a different mindset instead of always like a challenge to see if this is real. But when the character is good, the belief is good, the manners are good and strong, Allah opens based on that level of faith inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah For us students, does the reboot symbolize getting access to join this heavenly school under your guidance? The reboot is in everyone's life. So, no doubt, that's why we said the meditation is a continuous reboot and upgrade of your software. So, if you're coming for the first time, look at your telephone. You know you, ha you have a certain uh, system within yourself, you come for the first time for the shaykh, you've never heard anything like that. Yeah there's going to be a reboot, there's going to be fever, there's going to be sickness, there's going to be all sorts of things happening in the body because there's going to be hardware upgrades that the heart has to be increased in its capacity, the system of the body has to be purified and clean depending upon what people have put themselves through. So most definitely there's a hardware upgrade, there's software upgrade and those whom continuously make their tafakkur then what's happening? They're continuously receiving updates. And that's why we said the first few ayahs of, of Surah An-Nam actually describe the immensity of this light of Tahseen and said, those whom truly will understand it, the ones whom make salah and give zakah and they will achieve a yaqeen. Why? But because the salah is a way of connecting and opening the reality. The zakah means their entire life is to, to give from what Allah gave to them. You give from your money, you give from your time, you give from your sustenance, your food, whatever Allah has given to you, it's the activation of your salah. And that salah and that worshipness is in everything that you do. Their zikr is a salah, their, their, their meditation is a salah, their salah is a salah, it means everything of their ibadah and their worshipness Allah is teaching for them in this surah. In the first five, six, seven ayahs of Surah Nam. That the salah and the zakah are a key to the yaqeen and they will have certainty. Why? Because our life is about service. Anything I do has to have the proof of my belief. How am I praying and not giving my zakah? Not living a life of service and giving and, and giving from my time, giving from my ability. It's not giving power to my salah and as a result there's no yaqeen and no certainty. So it means all of these realities is what the tariqah is teaching that make our faith to be real at a continuous state in which to make ourselves to be purified. Zaki is that I purify myself. From everything around me, I give my zakah, I give my sadaqah, I give my mawlid, I give my time. Time is, is the most precious for people. They say, Shaykh, I'm so busy I can't come. Okay, but you're not going to say that in the grave when you're asking for help, that uh, you, you, you were busy. And then when difficulty is facing you in the grave, now what? Now you're not busy? So, no, this is what Allah means by zakah. That you give your time, 
If Allah gave you time, give it. If Allah gave you an ability, give it. Allah gave you an understanding, give it in that way. These are the people of yaqeen and certainty because their salah is real and as a result they make their connection. And then everything they do on top of their mandatory now becomes the holy hadith in which Allah is describing. They come through their voluntary, they're coming through the door of their voluntary worshipness. They did everything in their obligations, they gave themselves in their obligations. As a result they're coming through this door of, of love, I become their hearing, I become their seeing, I become the breath in which they breathe. The whole hadith al-Qudsi will open from the presence of Prophet to the presence of the seekers. So alhamdulillah Allah is giving to us the, a system in which to achieve these realities. Struggling in the way of Allah don't think anything is tough and difficult but opportunities. If it didn't open, wasn't meant to open, don't focus on making it open. So if you think there's a door at that wall and you keep emailing that it's just not opening, not opening. To us it sounds like it looks like you found a, a wall and you're just banging your head on the wall. Has it ever occurred to you, maybe Allah is not going to open it, stop banging your head there, go on to the next thing. Do your zikr, do your muraqabah, focus on this, focus on that, the job not opening. Maybe you're not supposed to be working in those places that are not very good. Find your job in a charity, you know find yourself in a different type of occupation, something different that doesn't need to, to be unpleasing to Allah Especially if they're of a, a different orientation, male orientation they have different jobs and different struggles and female orientation then different. In today's day where everything is very bad, very inappropriate. Better to find a charity if you have to work because of your need for sustenance than something that's not intensive, not aggressive and that the atmosphere is more supportive like charities, women organizations, child organizations, charity organizations, things that uh, would be, be better and closer towards service and that, that you get compensated for that service. So there's many different things that people can do that are of a low intensity and then they don't have to worry about it's not opening, it's not opening. It's not opening probably for wisdom. In, in some of these environments they're very inappropriate in, in, the, in the atmosphere of people. So Allah's great, Allah's protecting the servant from opening from what they want. Allah says, be weary of what you want. That be careful of what you want because you sometimes want the worst for yourself, not thinking and not knowing, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Tala. Sayyidi, this blessed month people want to literally argue about the milad. How can we make someone at least be polite and feel the love? We lack the love for the Prophet May Allah forgive us. Yeah inshaAllah we try to ignore these people especially in this month when there's so much light and it's like walking on water. These people who continuously try to prove it, they open up this can for no reason. There's no need to prove you love your father that I'm going to give you now 10 fatwas on, on the reality of loving my father. It just opens up a dialogue that was rude and unnecessary. It's not necessary, love your father, that's it. Celebrate the way you want to celebrate, those who don't like it like a barking dog. You don't have to go back at every dog and try to bark with him, leave them, leave people, not, not uh, even bother with people. Just celebrate that love, express that love, invite people to that love and those whom bark are barking dogs and leave them to themselves. But all shaitan wants is for us to stop, turn around and now think, okay I'm going to show the dog I'm more knowledgeable than him. And as soon as you do that you've reduced yourself to a dog. So why are you such a insan stopping now talking and yelling at this dog? 
So the analogy should be clear, you're upright person, do your acts and go. Why you stop now to yell at a dog? You know better than the dog and now shaitan has engaged you in a direction that's not necessary. This love, this kingdom, it don't need anybody, is not in need of anyone. We are in need of that love, we are in need of the nazar of Prophet So we propagate it, spread it, who comes, comes. Whom under the nazar be safe, those whom don't well, they see how difficulty opens in their life and they have regret. You know they bite their hand on how they regret, maybe I should have attended the mawlid, maybe I should have supported the mawlid, maybe this mawlid before they open all of these azab again on the earth and all these difficulties, maybe the food, the presence and the support of Milad al Nabi is your best vaccine. Not the vaccine that shaitan is giving and the, and the, the jabs that shaitan gives to people that are going to make you healthy, healthy from the artificial who. Why don't you take your, your, your barakah from the real who? You know stock up on your insurance policies from who, qul who Allahu ahad. From that who take all your barakah. Everything that we do in the way of this mawlid, it's like insurance packages for ourselves and for our loved ones, Ya Rabbi for the sake of mawlid and Nabi grant me shifa, grant me healing, grant me a way out of this sickness, out of this difficulty. But people have nothing in their count and they run after the, this, these companies and hoping that they put mRNA in them and it's not going to go into their brain and, and switch on a different uh, command. Instead of believing in those things, believe in Allah Almighty and the love for Sayyidina Muhammad but believe with proof. Means our actions they speak louder than just words and that's the best put the believer put their faith and trust in Allah Then what's the faith and trust in Allah Is the love for Sayyidina Muhammad because that's the stain, that's the level of faith that you love me more than you love yourself, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inna sharifa Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa la mashaykhina fi tariqat al ashbandiyyat al aliyya wa sa'ir wa saddathina wa siddiqina al fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.